Welcome to Vacuum Wars and to our review of the Kenmore Featherlight Lift Up Upright Corded Vacuum. We bought one and put it through all kinds of tests this week, and spoiler alert, I was really impressed. In fact, if we did our best upright vacuum video today, I'm positive that Kenmore Featherlight would win the best budget vacuum category. So links in the description, and let's get started. Starting off with the pros, let's begin with the feature where it gets its Featherlight name from, which is its very lightweight. It weighs right at 12 pounds which is extremely light for a vacuum of this type. The Shark Navigator, which I also consider to be extremely light, was almost two pounds heavier than the Kenmore, with the average weight of the ones I've tested being about 15 and a half pounds. When you take into account its weight distribution, light handle, and responsive swivel, I think it may be the most ergonomic or easy to use vacuum I've ever tested, and that includes many cordless stick vacuums. It also has what they call lift-up technology, where you can remove the canister from the floor head for above floor cleaning tasks, as well as a very easy to remove and replace wand for pickup of larger debris or as an extension. But where I was really blown away was with its pickup ability on hard floors and carpets. It has rather large openings or gates on the bottom of the floor head, which makes it good with picking up a wide range of sizes of debris. In fact, with our new scoring system, where I judge how well vacuums pick up different sizes of debris on carpets and hard floors, it scored the highest of any vacuum in its price range, and it wasn't close. The Kenmore was much better than the Shark Navigator, for example, here, which tends to snowplow larger debris, especially on hard floors. The Kenmore has a suction adjustment switch for high pile carpets or thick rugs, and a brush roll on-off switch, with the idea being that you turn it on for carpets and off for hard floors. But unlike the Shark Navigator, which has a similar brush roll switch, the Kenmore doesn't need that switch as much as the Shark does, since the Kenmore has a large fabric squeegee on the bottom of the floor head for a better seal on hard floors so that you can keep the brush roll on for hard floors without scattering debris. And I find that leaving the brush roll on for hard floors is much better for picking up pet hair and human hair than with the Shark. The Kenmore Featherlight had good power too. In our sealed suction tests, it was above average. It also scored above average with a perfect 100 on our carpet deep clean test, where we embed sand into medium pile carpet and weigh the bins before and after. One feature that's a must for me, which is very rare to to see with vacuums in this price range is a completely sealed HEPA filtration system, which traps the dust in the vacuum instead of leaking it back into your house. It's got LED lights on the floor head, which I think is a very useful feature, and it's another thing that the Shark Navigator does not have. Its attachment set is decent, as it includes a large upholstery tool, as well as a three-in-one combination tool, which is a crevice tool, dusting brush, and upholstery tool in one. The final pro I'll mention is its price. It's firmly in the budget category, and as you can probably tell, I think that there is a lot of value there. Before I move on to the cons, there are a few things that were just kind of neutral, like the cord length at 25 feet, which is the same as the Shark. Its airflow was also right at the average amount overall, though I would submit that it was probably above average for its price range. Although I could not find the official dust bin capacity online in my not-so-scientific tests, I think it was similar to the Shark's, though probably a bit less capacity capacity, but it was easier to remove and empty, and it has the same open design that makes it easy to keep free from clogs. Moving on to the negative stuff, it easily got tangled with human hair, which is kind of nitpicky since every vacuum I've tested in this price range does about the same. Kenmore scored slightly below average with the crevice pickup test and the unsealed suction test, which was directly related to its larger front gates, as the crevice test and the unsealed suction test are always a trade-off with its larger debris pickup. That is, if you have more space between the vacuum and the floor to allow for larger debris, it won't have as good of a seal. So it's a balancing act that all manufacturers wrestle with, but I think that the Kenmore Featherlight has really found the sweet spot of gate size and floor seal. It was also a little louder than average at 84 decibels versus about 81. Nothing major, but worth noting. As you can probably tell, I'm very happy with the Kenmore Featherlight liftup. Really, my only concern is that it's relatively new, and although it seems exceptionally well made, and the reviews so far are very positive, there's always the potential that there's some long-term issue that I could be missing, but but barring anything like that, I think I've found my new favorite budget upright vacuum, and I'm keeping this one at our house. Links in the description, and be sure to subscribe to Vacuum Wars before you leave. Thanks for watching.